What's up guys, Michael here. Going to go ahead and show you the results of the Shear Fab air to water intercooler for the Holly High Ram. Uh, in my application it's on a low ram, but uh, I'm pretty sure it fits a mid ram too as long as it's the original uh, bolt pattern. I guess Holly has like multiple bolt patterns for their lowers and such. <clears throat> but as you can see, it just bolts right to the top of the low ram just like a high ram lid would overall as far as the appearance of it uh, and the quality of the welds it's on point uh, I'm very uh, pleased with the quality and uh, sheer fabs ice tank is equal in quality it's a nice piece and I got the uh, throttle cable bracket as well um, and my results are unbiased not that anybody else's would be biased I think Doug Cook with Motion Raceworks has a review on this intercooler but he also sells this intercooler and I'm sure you know everyone he sells he's probably making a couple hundred bucks um, not that he would be dishonest or anything but uh, I'll go ahead and show you my results and how well it worked for me and you can compare the two reviews I think I think there's only one review on YouTube so mine would be the second I think there may be more now I haven't looked in a while but uh, it did work and also with X amount of dome pressure I was commanding when I went from the air to air intercooler to this air to water intercooler uh, X amount of dome pressure made less boost so that tells me that this core was less restrictive than the bell core that I had, which was a uh, chiseled performance. I believe there he's out of like uh, Miami, Dade, like South Florida, but I had him custom make me an air to air, and uh, it was just way too much heat. I was having 200 degree intake air temps, and I'm still getting 140s with this, but I'll pull up the data logs and show you a comparison with the air to air to the air to water so check it out all right this first data log will be air to air and it's in orlando november of 2020 so down here you can see it's in vacuum at negative 3.5 pounds of boost intake air temp is 111 and then this area here is on the trans brake. Just before I released the trans brake, it was making 8.4 pounds of boost and intake air temp was 127. And from the release of the trans brake to where the boost is gonna be bouncing up and down on dome, it was making, so 1.2 seconds, it was making 22 pounds of boost and it carried it through the eighth mile run. And by the time boost fell off or I should have released the throttle pedal so it would have lost TPS it was 196.9 degrees intake air temp so well that'll show up here so again that is the air to air in November in Orlando and now I'll bring up the air to water all right so this is a air to water pass and starting right here would be after the burnout so the intake air temp is 122 degrees and as I bring it up on the trans brake here you see the temperatures dropping because it's pushing air through the intercooler so right there it's 90 99 degrees and then from the time I let go of the trans brake, it's 80 degrees. And so let me scale it out to the, this would be my boost target table. So in 0.998 seconds, it is seeing 25 pounds of boost. So that's three more pounds of boost than it's seen in the air to air data log. And right there, the intake air temp is 80 degrees so at that point it's just barely starting to climb and then 
right here in this next spike where the boost goes up again it goes up to 30 pounds that's where I was being outran so I grabbed the scramble which is 30 pounds and you can see the intake air temp on 30 pounds is 112 and that is roughly 3.1 seconds into the run and as it goes over to the end of the run intake air temp is 144 degrees so overall the air to water intake does work it performs like it should but i'm pretty certain that i'm out of turbo just based on how much heat it's making in general versus some of the research i did on uh, these intakes or air to water intakes in general and kind of what my turbos are doing versus my cubic inches so that's the the data for the shear fab air to water intercooler as you can see big difference so 30 pounds of boost 145 degrees versus 22 pounds of boost and 198 degrees so the air to water is where it's at and my strategy is i put about seven pounds of ice in the pits and i drive it to the starting line and depending on how unorganized the event is you know you could be sitting down there in the sun in the staging for 30 more minutes before you ever pull into the line to do your burnout and when we get back to the pits there might be a handful of ice cubes left in the ice tank uh, the water is definitely hot by that point it's definitely melting the ice rapidly but that's it I hope anybody who's looking to purchase one of these intakes, uh, this video can help make your decision. And thanks for watching.